Hey folks, Phil B-Man here. I've got my samples. I've got uh, my sticky boards that I've just rechecked. And I've got Saturday night because uh, my wife and daughter are off at some hockey tryout. So I want to make a bit more sense of my mite situation. I'll be honest with both myself and with you, I procrastinated on this. I took a lot of these samples over the last uh, uh, two weeks. I've been sitting on them, especially on the mite samples from the 4x4 trial. But before we get to those, let's talk about the sticky boards. So <clears throat> it was a bit of a debacle. A lot of them ended looking like that. We can all guess, uh, I don't know, the Rorschach test or uh, some sort of geography game to figure out what country is most shaped like that. Uh, maybe that's a gerrymandered district somewhere. Um, and that invited some comments. So when I went, I was just going through these now. First of all, did not find any mites that we didn't, we found that one mite the first time. Uh, and you know, it was getting later in the evening and I was looking through my camera lens. So, um, I didn't find any more mites now. But what, the other thing I noticed is that some of my screens are getting pretty beat up. I usually use these in the spring when the hives are a lot less populous. So, this bent screen where the bees could get under it because it curled up at the edge corresponded with this gerrymandered sticky board. Whereas this sticky board with relatively little damage corresponded with this relatively uh, sound screen. So uh, it's a lesson for the future. I need to what I should do is neatly pile all those springs and then put a heavy weight on them for a while. Uh, did, uh, well, there's a question on the chat, did the bees carry out mites that may have been on the sticky board? Uh, and that's entirely possible, right? If they carried out the whole sticky board, any mites or any other debris that was on it also got thrown out. The point of having a, a sticky board doesn't tell you anything unless you've got that screen that prevents that. So if the debris, including dead mites, falls through the screen and is left unmolested on the sticky board. If uh, the bees can get to it, then they will throw it out. That's why the bottom board of a good hive is always clean. So you're trying to, the screen is to prevent that from happening. That's, that's the, the mode of action of the screen. Okay, let's, let's set those to the side. So that, that told us all of nothing. What we want to do now is confirm that with a, uh, with a mite sample. So I'm going to do this uh, quick and dirty style where I'm going to use my, my shaker. I've got my samples. I've got uh, three samples from that 4x4 yard. They were randomly taken from uh, that site. And then I've got a whole bunch of samples from my other yards. Maybe we'll find a yard that has slightly higher mite levels and we'll replicate that trial again. To be honest, what I'm hoping is we find no mites. And uh, what that would tell me is my my routine in the spring, apivar early, and those bees had were sitting on that apivar for quite a while with very little brood growth. Uh, it was stayed cold for quite a long time. The mites probably got a pretty good knockdown uh, from that. And then I did that formic treatment in sort of late spring, about two weeks before honey supers went on. Um, and in the past, when I've done a late spring formula treatment, my winter survivability the next year has tended to be better. So I'm hoping that that formic treatment was also effective and that we find relatively low mites now. 
Let me say before we begin, or maybe I'll start and we'll talk at the same time. I, I continue to worry that uh, our... Oh man, I messed these up. I have one bottle here somewhere that is labeled with my... Here we are, okay. It's probably hard to see on the camera, but uh, last year when I had Dave count out samples of bees, so it's 100 bees, 200 bees, 300 bees, 400, 500, 600 bees. So we can, you know, estimate there that this sample has about 400 bees in it. it says Starbuck number three. So that's 400 bees. So if we found four mites, that would be 1%. Now I was saying that I worry about the statistical significance of these sorts of samples. For a, a large commercial beekeeper like me, it seems like I'm sampling large numbers of bees. And yet, you know, what do I, you know, if I infer from all of these samples, what percentage of my overall total bee population, you know, I'm probably upwards of 500 million bees, uh, you know, if I sample a thousand bees, what kind of statistical significance is that going to have? You know, the economic significance, uh, the economic threshold for treatment of mites is a couple percent. I don't think I'm, I'm sampling to that level of accuracy. So uh, that's a worry I have. So I'm looking at the bottom here, trying to find, I picked up dirt off of those sticky boards, trying to find mites floating in there and I see none. And I'm going to just to be double sure, I'm going to pour that fluid over a, a cheesecloth here. And we got nothing. Okay. Good. Zero mites. We'll dump those out. And what I will do is a as a back check is then I'll have this giant bucket of bees and I'm gonna at the end wash that whole thing and pour it through a filter cloth and just double check that I haven't uh, missed a whole bunch of bees. Okay, Starbuck number two. These, these samples have been kicking around for a while. Everything should be pretty soft and goopy. Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't count those bees. Oh, you can see the numbers on this sample jar now better. So we better pour that in there and count those. Okay, so that's 500. Pour it back in here. Real Lafreniere, our provincial apron, says if you're not shaking off parts of bees, you're not shaking hard enough. And it's pretty brown, goopy water. I think I see one. Let's pour it through the filter. Nope. 
hope I see some brown specks, but I don't see any mites. Amazing. Okay, Starbuck number one. Now that's a slightly fewer number of bees. I'm going to call that uh, 350. I collected, by the way, these samples from the underside of my, no, uh, yeah, that's what I did with all of these. The underside of the bee escape, which worked fantastic. You got all those clumps of bees just above the brood cluster. I can't imagine that they're not representative of what's in the brood chambers itself. And I didn't have to pull any frames. So as I pulled the honey, I would just pick uh, random hives and I would count you know, went, uh, ask employers with to pick a number between one and 10. And then, uh, you know, if they said three, it'd be every third hive or if four, every fourth hive. Uh, and you could easily buy a sample because, you know, some hives have just bees everywhere and you just easy to grab them very copiously. Those are probably not a hive that's suffering from mites. So you do want to sort of kind of maybe look for mites in a place where they're a little harder to get. I'm not seeing nothing. Pour it through the filter. I think we got one at last. Nope. Sort of a mite shaped goop, but not an actual mite. Zero. Well, that uh, is good for my bees, but bad for my test. Let's go on a hunt for some other site that has mites. Where do we think we might find some mites? Ah, Petura, where is that? This is a yard site uh, that I've been kind of worried about all summer. It, just those bees didn't perform up to scratch. So let's have a look at these. Okay, for, oh, wait, our number. Pretty healthy sample here. Let's call that 500 bees. Hmm. Well, whatever was bothering those hives, it wasn't mites. close to home here. Homewood, that is, you know, put, I'll put my counter, where can I do this so you guys can see that? There's the counter. 
there's the standard so I see that as about 400 beads Hmm, that batch of uh, uh, antifreeze a little foamier. I think we've got a swimmer on this one. There we got mites. Not tons. Couple of mature ones. I don't know if that'll show up in the camera. That's one for sure. Two, three, four, five. Homeward, five. Well, maybe that's, so that's over 1%. 400 bees, five, five mites. Okay, well, cut mites somewhere anyway. Now, unfortunately, that site already got a thymol treatment on every hive. So maybe I can't replicate my trial there anyway. Okay, next one. Oh, I've lost track of my counter again. There we are. Oh, well, if that one had higher mites, then let's go for one in the same area. And I would say that is 500 bees. Not a great job and if you like things that smell nice. Um, when I was a summer student years ago I worked in the bee lab for the province. We spent a lot of time dissecting bees looking for trachea mite. You spent all day with your nose in a petri dish cutting slices of, of bees for analysis. Whenever there was field work to do, I volunteered pretty quick. I guess that makes me uh, either uh, crazy or stupid. I'm not sure which. Because it was pretty easy work. 
compared to going out and lifting supers. We had to go uh, collect the samples, sometimes off of hives with four or five boxes of honey off them. That one's got two mites. Show you what we're looking for here. These are nice clear ones. There and there. A the little specks. <clears throat> And we want to keep this family uh, friendly, so I won't tell you what I think about Varroa mites. But you can probably guess. Okay, well, let's see, we're chasing those highs up Highway 2, or the mites up Highway 2. Where would we go next? Uh, Sanford. That's a little smaller sample. Let's call it 375. Thinking about the B-Lab days, uh, as it turns out, I was one of the first people to detect the working working for the province, uh, finding Varroa in Manitoba. Um, we were monitoring the border. We put out swarm traps to see if bees uh, were crossing the border with with mites on them, and they sure were. We caught, uh, I think I caught a whole pile of swarms. I mean, 50 or 60 swarms that summer by putting out swarm traps with pheromone lures. And then uh, we hive those and then put sticky boards under them. It's a pile of work. Zero. Okay, well, we'll go the other way. Back towards Starbucks. Let's call that 350. So that was finding those mites. That was back in, I think, 89 or 90. And uh, you know, I think we all knew that the mites would get here sooner or later. And we had a pretty good run keeping them under control with Apostan. I think I got some swimmers there. And then the mites got immune to that. Then we used check mite, and that worked for not nearly as long as the Acrostan did. And now we're using the third pack of strips, the Apovar, and I think it's only a matter of time before those bite us in the ass too. So I'm trying to be really diligent about rotating my treatments, but they don't have a whole lot of choices. What the heck one was that? That was rice. Right? Yes. 
Okay, well, let's it's empty. Let's go up north here. Ooh, that's a smaller one. The bees must have been a little tight that day. 250. I feel like this is a light pitch, it isn't. Oh yeah, that's one. One, two, three. That was fossils. So that's getting up. Three gets us over one percent. In terms of my overall uh, plans, I've once I sort of got a sense that the mites probably were under control, I immediately decided uh, I was going to do what I'd call a maintenance treatment, where I'm using a, a lower intensity, maybe softer chemical to knock the mites back without uh, using sort of the silver bullet option. Although I did use Apovar strips on some of the splits I made because I didn't want to want to I mean, that's a bit of an experiment too and I didn't want to put a something that would make the bees agitated and less likely to accept a queen and kind of screw up that experiment. So that's a one. And that was Cote. So that one, okay, this is up north, I'd say it's about 300 bees. So anyway, using the uh, uh, APA Life VAR or VAR, I don't know why I, VAR is the suffix they put behind everything, 
but uh, it's pretty pricey. But uh, applies, you know, pretty easy. I found the. Uh, they say you don't need a space under the under the lid. The Thymovar, you're supposed to have a space on both sides of the wafer. And my lids and my hive blankets don't really accommodate that. When I tried Thymovar years ago, I hung it down between the frames and uh, that was a lot of work among, among other things. So which one was this stuff? This isn't a dose. And I estimate I still have these. Don't see maybe one. Uh, this video is getting a little long, let's face it, but I hope I'm impressing upon you, uh, you know, the need to be diligent about these things. That's about 400 bees. And that it's a major, it's a major time commitment to be on top of your mites. Um, the temptation to take one sample from one hive at one apiary site, or maybe you've only got a few hives and you sample one hive, you get a zero and you go, phew, problem, you know, that's all good. Um, you know, that's, that doesn't cut it. You should uh, be sampling from, each of these samples represents, uh, I was trying for five, equal amounts from five hives. Now, that cuts both ways, right? I'm not detecting if I have individual highs where things are out of control, right? Uh, if I was looking for, which would be possible if you know, you've got, say, you've recently developed uh, mites that are, are uh, you know, treatment resistant or, you know, a hive that's really turned into a mite bomb. Uh, you're not detecting that. I'm trying to get an overall perspective on my my treatment. I could have what could really be happening is out of a yard of 40 hives, I got all of them with zero, and then one hive where they're out of control. And this treat this uh, methodology is not going to catch that. Uh, what I'm trying to ascertain is what the average infection rate is in the hives because I want to know what I what I would do with all of them and you could you know with a system like this I could uh, you know either go back and treat uh, individual sites more aggressively that was James Valley that's zero um, or, I mean, if I'm not seeing huge spikes, you know, we're, we're hovering between, it's part of that homewood yard, it's over 1%. Um, you know, I don't think I have what we would call an out of control situation right now. Let's call that 350 mites. So, uh, but I'm, I've become a, a bigger believer in, in maintenance treatments. You, have, you think you got zero mites, you think you got 1%, you got 1.5%. You should still treat with something. Now, ideally it would be something very bee friendly and very human friendly. 
So whether that be, you know, an organic acid, formic, or, uh, and the thymols really, it would cook, uh, even though it's an oil, it's, it's acidity that's the active, the mode of action on those hives. And for a full regime with that thymol, I need to actually go back three times. If I was finding zero mites here, maybe I think, well, you know, I, I could maybe cut that down to two treatments. If uh, you know, I am finding some mites, so I probably don't want to cheat on that. Because what I'm hoping is I knock the mites back to where next spring I also can use something soft and gentle and just, you know, keep them, keep them down. Uh, so, you know, I guess my thinking is I'll always be treating, but with, um, that's one mite. I'll always be treating with the, uh, a nice range of options. And to, uh, to, to mix it up and then save your, uh, you know, your going, you know, when you might have to go nuclear one day and you want to save that option for when it's really going to count. For us up here in Canada, the treatment windows are, you know, pretty, uh, pretty narrow. We got, you know, honey supers on the hives from late mid June typically to the end of August. So that gives you September, a little bit into October where you can work bees before it snows, and then we got six months of winter. And then you're back into the highs early April. And so you got April again till probably you should be, you know, you wouldn't be applying anything before the end of May because by the middle of June, you're, you're back into the honey super. So we really got two treatment windows. Gotta make, the, I don't think you should, a Canadian beekeeper should probably ever miss a window. So it's more, more a question of what rather than whether you are sampling. Only four left. We're almost there, guys. Holy smokes, it's going to be an hour by the time we're done. Call that This uh, is typically a field test kind of methodology. And very effective for detecting higher levels of mites. It's probably not as accurate. Those bees can kind of act as a bit of a filter themselves and there can be mites trapped up in there. So now, again, how accurate do you need to be and how accurate um, you know, what, what, what's your goal? If you're, if this was for, you know, PhD level scientific research, I'd need to wash all of these samples and shake them for a prescribed amount of time. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm doing a, 
you know, how do I run my apiary with multiple sites? Brian, that was zero. Three left. This one's quite a pile of bees. Let's call that 500. Call that four hundred bees. Nothing. That's from some twin hives, that sample. So that's nice. Those are all nukes. Nice to know they're in good shape. Schroeder, it was 300. I'm not sample. I didn't sample every single apiary site. I sometimes, well, some days I forgot to bring the sample jars with me and we're pulling honey. Some days I had the sample jars with me and I forgot. But I think I have a fairly representative. I certainly don't have pockets. You know, I got my map up here, uh, and I I don't have pockets that weren't, you know, zones um, that haven't been sampled, so. That's good to know. Okay, this is the last one. Can you believe it? We're finally done. What a pile of work. Nothing. Well, I like no mites. So, let's talk about it a little bit here. We got more sites, I think, with zero than not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and eleven. Eleven out of seventeen samples was zero. And then the only one, well, there's a couple that are of concern. Small sample with three bees here. And then this site here. Five bees, so 
both of those are over slightly over one percent the rest are all well you know it's two mites on 300 bees that's uh two mites on 500 you know so I think my strategy already at least partially implemented of, of a, a maintenance treatment. We're not going nuclear. We're just uh, going to knock the bees back. Like if I can get, you know, all of the, all of those sites back below 1%. Uh, now, that's a moving target. Because 1% on Labor Day isn't 1% on the 1st of October. Those mites are in the brood and they'll be uh, emerging as that brood hatches out. And there's no less brood for those bees to go into or those mites to go into. So they become uh, the number of phoretic mites. If you did nothing, the number of phoretic mites on those bees will go up. It'll at least double if not treble. So you go from 1% to 3% or from 2% to 6%. Uh, and then you're in trouble. So having uh, a maintenance treatment in those hives as that brood hatches out uh, is something that's, I think, a really good strategy. Uh, you also, uh, here's the rub, is anything that interferes with the bees feeding or interferes with, uh, you know, queen, uh, 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 by vitality or the vitality of the hive because basically now these hives there's very little I can do for them after I feed them until next spring you'll see me playing around I'm going to do some work in the bee shed to see because that's my other window is if I could figure out how to get something going on in the bee shed then uh, I've got all winter with those bees in this bill just next door here to to work away at. Rob Curry, our, our local uh, uh, professor of, of entomology, a department head at the University of Manitoba, he did a lot of work early in his career with formic in wintering buildings. We've never really capitalized on that. It's never been commercialized because no one's got the uh, the risk tolerance to do something to all your hives, right? Very few of us have wintering facilities that are compartmentalized. Um, and I certainly don't. Um, but boy, the temptation to try to go back to that and to see uh, what you could do is, is very tempting. But boy, I'd sure like to do it hive by hive, not treat the whole room. All right, well, it's, uh, I heard uh, the ladies come back. So I'm going to go in and see how the tryout went and report my findings and that um, our mites are under control and I hopefully that news will be well received. Thanks a lot everyone. Have a great day.